What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we will not be working on anything of mine, but we'll be working on this thing. Matthew, this one's for you. So, we're going to go to the junkyard. Got Seth here. We're going to go trade him off for my older son since he's not allowed in the junkyard. We found that out last time. Poor little guy sat in the truck for a couple hours while we raw parts for that 8.8 for the Mustang. My wife's coming with us. She's going to be well, getting dirty. <laughs> Hopefully uh, doing some recording as well. But we're going to take Seth over to the, uh, the in-laws house, pick up my oldest so he can come out and help. And uh, yeah, get some parts for this thing. See if we can't get it back on the road. So get the truck loaded up with tools. I'll see you guys at the junkyard. Here we are. We made it. It's my wife. Told you we were going to get Jake. We had to, to trade the little one in for the big one. <laughs> uh, already roamed the yard. Got a grill and some uh, headlights off another vehicle on the other side of the yard. And then we found this guy right here. So we're going to get the hood off, core support, and the fender. So we're going to uh, give my wife the camera. She'll be recording us as we're working. So let's get to it. Back the shop. See, I got my trucks all loaded up with parts. We got a, ended up getting a hood for that thing. Got the uh, core support, driver's side fender, the grill, both headlights, blinkers. So now I just gotta get the hood off this thing, get the core support out. First though, whew, I'm not glad to be here. It was hot there. Uh, we'll go ahead and get everything out of the get everything out of the truck. Get it laid out on the shop floor there, kind of go over, see if what kind of clips or hardware we got. And then, uh, yeah, get ourselves set up. Start, uh, finish tearing the, uh, finish tearing this thing apart. Radiator sports out, everything's tore apart. All I gotta do now is kind of go through, get a wire brush, knock some of the rust off the frame rails there around where the mounts were. Go ahead and uh, use the air blower wire brush, and then once I get all the rust off, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some rust neutralizer. You can get this in any auto, auto parts store. Kind of helps stop and encapsulate the rust, keep try to keep it from going any farther, and then I'll spray it with some undercoating before I put the new core support back in. Uh, you guys can see here here's the old one we are changing it out it did get smashed up in here a little wrinkled right here plus there is some rot and some rust up inside well, 
don't think I can get the camera in there, but bottoms work mounts. I mean, I could spend a couple hours or whatever hammering it out, try to straighten it up to get the new fender to fit, but you know what? Core support was 45 bucks, so I'm going to spend a little extra time to get all the wiring, radiator, everything out of it, swap it out. Plus, it was just a good idea when I seen the rust on it, the front of it too, just to swap it out. As you guys can see here, here's our new one, our new old one. It's not all smashed. Everything's nice and straight. No rust in the pockets anywhere. Just a little bit of dirt. It's in really, really good shape. Plus it had all these little, other little uh, air dams and everything else. This one that got busted in when he uh, went deer hunting. <laughs> uh, so. We're gonna reuse those, that's really nice. It came with that, 45 bucks, came with the radiator support. New power steering cooler, because the other one was a little rotted out. The mounts, clips, everything, which is really, really cool, because pulling this one apart, about 80% of the clips all broke, which is another good reason to keep all your hardware if you guys are at the junkyard, swapping over parts. Um, good idea when you do this too, undo the battery, take the battery out, Put it off in the corner somewhere because you're gonna have some wires you're gonna do some wires things are gonna be laying across each other you really don't want those things arcing and this is the one from the junkyard of course it also came with the uh, airbag sensors now i just knock uh the center pins out with a center punch see here got the hammer center punch Makes it easier to drill out. We are not using, and I do I do not ever recommend using airbag sensors from the junkyard. For one, I just don't know the history on them, and the last thing I want to do is put everything back together, plug the battery in, have a faulty sensor, and all of a sudden set an airbag, or an airbag light for that matter. So it's always just a good idea to not use the little sensors and stuff. Just swap the old ones over. We know these worked. Didn't have a light on. All the airbags are still intact, so that's what I'm gonna do. Just swap those out. But yeah, get the camera set up. We are gonna finish swapping over the parts from the old one to the new core sport. Get it ready and uh, start putting this thing back together. Now you can see most of our front clip is put back on. Got our fender, got our hood, core supports in there. 90% of the hardware is installed, but all of it just kind of like hand tight or loose. That's a, another, that's like a little tip I could give you guys. If you're gonna do something this extensive, where you're gonna replace the whole front clip, fenders, make sure you got the fenders loose. Don't tighten a single bolt on it until you get all of the major panels installed because uh i can almost guarantee you're gonna want to shift some things around things need to be tweaked here and there and kind of show you here real quick see here uh, we'll close the get this rod out of the way show you guys what i mean kind of got the hood sit up in there and it's a little safety latch and if you come on over here 
you'll see that the edge of the hood is like right on the fender and then you got your little gap back there which is about of course where you want the gap but there now I've gone ahead and rigged up a little tow strap because the main radiator support bolts are loose I went ahead and left them loose but I rigged up a strap to the corner of the core support there and just to the front frame rail Cut and then just we'll go ahead and ratchet it up you guys can see I'm kind of shifting it over come up to the top now you can see push down the hood nice even line all the way through come over here to the other side as well so you can see pretty even line all the way through all these bolts are loose of course so we will end up pushing the fender back into place and we still got to tweak the hood a little bit but that's why you kind of want to leave all your bolts and everything loose so that way you're not fighting everything everything will line up <laughs> but it is a lot of fun it is time consuming and uh yeah so get the camera set up again go ahead and tighten the core support down we'll go ahead and get the fenders all finished bolted up and uh, we'll start installing the grill and the headlights. We are back together my job is done everything that needed to be replaced was replaced fender hood core support or radiator support whatever you want to call it i took most of the twist out of the bumper uh it's got a new power steering cooler i let it's been running for a while all the lights have been checked and cleaned up so i am done with this car until the next time actually hopefully there won't be a next time Hope he stays clear from the deer this time. But um, before I end this video, I actually want to kind of go over something with you guys real quick. Kind of show you how I made this light. So you can see all hazy, wore out. Look like those lights. Nice and clear. Put this up there, you can kind of see the difference. It's really, really easy. I actually did it with a... Uh, kit you can buy at an auto parts store i got this one at uh autozone got it at autozone it's just under 30 bucks mcguire's headlight restoration kit works really really well so get you set up on the stand real quick and kind of kind of go over with you how i how i cleaned it up all right so you can see here got the light set up on a stand I use this little foam pad that comes with the kit. It's got a thousand grit uh, sandpaper right here. Basically, you got a little water bottle. It's an old Windex bottle. Water with a little bit of soap. Just kind of squirt your water on there. Real quick. Make sure she's nice and wet. Plenty of water. Don't be shy with it. Put some water on your little pad too. The kit comes with two of these pads. I believe they want you to use one for each headlight, but 
as long as you keep it wet, don't do it dry really, it lasts much longer than that. Sit there and then go in a circular motion. A little bit of pressure. Try to get around all the little, these little guys here, some people don't know, but these are for like body shops. They have a tool that comes in, it sits on these guys, little suction cups or little keyways, puts there and it adds a level to the light. And that's how body shops can level and make sure your lights are within sync with each other. If anybody's ever wondered what those are, that's what they are. But go here, make sure we get all the way up around the corners, all the way around. Now the reason you want to use the little sandpaper and stuff, keep it wet, is because it's going to take out all your little, all the little dirt and everything that goes in there. Now if you're lazy, like I am sometimes, you can polish lights without sanding them. It doesn't come out as clean and it'll leave whatever's there in your little buffing pad, so... I recommend doing it, just cleaning them out. But every once in a while you just don't feel like it, I get it. But as you can see already, just by sanding and cleaning it, how much the light has improved already. A lot of the dinginess is gone. Get there. You can see already if you can remember, but a lot of that dinginess is already gone. Just by sanding and cleaning. I think that'll work pretty clear. Go ahead and rinse the light back off. Rinse a lot of that dirt off there. sitting right here yes, all right wipe it off get all the dirt around the corners get the water off it so if you remember what it looked like before we started doing this it's still a little hazy but much much cleaner now the kit comes with this little stuff here use that on your plastic lenses i like it because it works really well now the kit even though it says headlight restore kit you can use this stuff on pretty much any kind of i mean your headlights blinkers tail lights it all works. Now that kit I showed you comes with a neat little wool pad. So that's what we're going to use. I have this guy here. It's a sponge. I've had it for a while now. It's just it's what I've always used. But for argument's sake, we're going to use this to cut. It came in the kit. See how well it works. Before you start, just put it on there. Go ahead and take this, kind of get some of that compound in here. Get it in the pad all the way around if you can. Just kind of smear it in around the corners. Yeah, make sure you got nice good coverage all over everything. Put in your little drill. I like to start off just a little, little slow at first. Kind of make sure I get everything worked around real well. Kind of get a feel for it.
That's another reason. I don't know if you can see it on video, but that's another reason I don't like using these kind of pads. It throws a little lint everywhere, but they do polish really well. It just likes to throw all the little lint pieces at you. So, but now that you got it worked in real good, go ahead and turn your RPMs up. Work back and forth. Try not to stay in one spot for too, too long. Because the whole point, really polishing, what it does is it heats everything up. Kind of gets it to melt stuff back down. Kind of how it polishes. Kind of reactivates a little bit. Throws a little flatter. So don't stay in one spot too long. Do work back and forth. Got it all cleaned up as well as it's gonna get. Go ahead and put it up here next to the other one there. Yep. Not as clear as the top one, but of course this one was a little bit more oxidized than that one. But definitely a lot, lot better. So like I said, that little kit there, you can probably you can that whole particular one was at all his own. It's under 30 bucks. Can be used a lot more than just for your headlights. You can use it on your blinkers, tail lights, third light. Anything you want to clean up, kind of clean up the look of your car a little bit, especially if you have an older vehicle. It does work well, and any little bit helps at night too. So you definitely see a lot better, get a lot more light through that lens now than you did before. But kind of a neat little trick there. That that stuff does work. It does save you a couple bucks. I have bought lights off of eBay before those cheap ones you get set for like 30, 40 bucks. But after about a year, especially if it sits in the sun, then those lights turn into the yellow mess that this one was. So six to one, half a dozen the other. But uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's not what I normally work on, but every once in a while I do get asked to help out. And uh, definitely helps me too. It brings in a little bit of money to put into these other projects so I can keep them going. So every little bit helps. And uh, so, yeah, with that, all that being said, thank you guys for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button for me. Help me build this channel. Take it, Just keep taking it farther and farther. Like I said, hopefully one day I'll be able to do a lot more and help you guys out. And uh, again, thank you guys for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you on the next one.